Hey, welcome to the channel. I'm glad you're here with me today. I'm Derek Stokes for Stoke Living. And man, this Oklahoma heat has got me in the mood for some deer hunting. No, not really, but I need to get in the mood for it because the season will be here before I know it. Um, I've got some work I need to do to get things ready. So come along with me today and we're gonna get things set up out there on the farm. Um, I've had Sean from Keeping It Dutch. He's been out there doing a lot of work uh, clearing some some brush on our hillside and then clearing me some lanes in the woods and I'm gonna get in there and Should make it a lot easier for for doing some really for some youth hunting getting the kids involved and uh, Going going that way. So come along with me Let's go look and see what Sean has been doing out there in the farm. So one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take and uh, set me up a little spot where I can feed the deer and kind of see what's going on and, and kind of keep uh keep them central on our property because around us we're surrounded by some private land but also a lot of public land and i kind of like to kind of keep the deer coming towards us but i've got some problems the cows love corn and i've got to get a spot kind of fenced off uh, to kind of keep the cows out and then also instead of just corn we have abundance of spoiled and not so good apples. So I'm gonna take some of those apples out there and just kind of see what kind of varmints or deer come and uh, partake of the apples. So what I've got uh, some apples down here in a bucket down in the, the root cellar that I'm gonna take and put out there at the fruit stand. And then I'm gonna take kind of some of the spoilage because we, what I've got is they're on a fruit stand, it's facing the south. And so a lot of sun gets on there. And so some of them get, if it's hot like this, they'll kind of get sunburnt. And uh, I'm gonna take some of those out and we're gonna feed them to the deer. Yeah, some of these are getting a little bit sunburnt, but I don't know if I built me like a little awning over here, kind of a, I don't know how well it'd work. But the deer, the deer will enjoy these, that's for sure. These apples right here, we call them the yellow delicious. Man, they are just a great tasting apple and uh, most of them are pretty large in size and it's a very sweet apple they're a, they're a hot commodity all right so i need to move our uh, deer feeder to a different spot the reason why is it's in, a, it's in a great spot right now for the deer but it's also a great spot for the cows i need to take and move it into the woods a little ways so i can take in some bob wire around it and uh, keep the cows out of it because the cows really like the corn and as much as i like our cows i don't like seeing the cows where i'm hunting so i'm going to move this bad boy i see something very concerning but i'm going to move this bad boy maybe just maybe and uh put it in the, in the woods somewhere else. And I'm gonna show you what I, I'm a little bit concerned with, okay? I just looked right in here. So what it is, it's a rotary feeder on the bottom side of it. And the corn, there's a cone inside this barrel. So the corn funnels down, goes right down there, and then it's on a timer and the sucker spins around and broadcasts the corn out. I, haven't, I didn't use this at all last year. And it's just kind of been sitting here. And what I need to do is I need to take, because it's going to be inside my barbed wire, I need to bring this down so that I can put the feed in there. Because what I do now is I take the full weather, back it up, stand on the back side of the full weather, dump my feed in while I'm there. But whenever it's inside there, I'm not going to get the full weather to it because I'm not going to make a gate or anything. I'm just going to string barbed wire around it. So I need to bring it down about a foot but i've got a problem right here i'm gonna show you what my problem is and i just noticed it 
See if you guys can see what my problem is. I think that is a guardian of what's inside. And that is an old red wasp. And the other day, Olivia, she just turned 16, had a wonderful birthday party. It was a surprise birthday party. And uh, she doesn't like surprises that much. We had a fun time with it. But she, she enjoyed her birthday. But uh, we had a bunch of friends, her basketball team over, lots of her friends. And we had a weenie roast at my mom and dad's place. Well, I had to go home to my house to get some wood because we forgot it. Me and my brother-in-law, we were loading up wood into the side-by-side -side and it was kind of dark and the most excruciating pain ever happened to me, I think. I don't know, it just, it, it seems the most excruciating right now. On my finger and there was something that stung me and it hurt like almost caused paralysis in my hand and stuff like that. I think it was one of those old cow killers, but I don't know, that's what I'm saying it is and I heard it's the third most painful sting in America. But it could have been an old honeybee, and I'm just being a big baby. But I'm going with one of those cow killer ants. This guy, he's sitting right here, and I think there's some red wasp up in there, maybe a, a hive. But let's see if I hit that, see if I got anything else coming out. He just kind of flew off. He might have just been resting there. So I've got to tip this thing over and if I take off running and screaming and yelling, you know what y'all know what happened. I think it was just alone. Lone wolf. Nope, there's a bunch of them, they're coming out. There's some waspers coming out of there. Let's see what it looks like. There's a bunch of kind of rotted corn in there. Let's see if I can do this without getting stung. Don't get out of there. I just made them mad. Talk about kicking a corn's nest. There's one right there. I think I scared them all off. So what, what I got to do now is make these things shorter so I can dump the feed in just by standing there. I'm going to take about yay much off there.
think I can reach it. That was a perfect measurement. Huh. I just amaze myself sometimes. Okay, well, we got this thing set up. Got the uh, bob wire somewhat done. I think I'm gonna have to run another strand. I've just got two strands. I run out, I had like one foot of bob wire left and I was just guesstimating on my area. Hopefully I made it big enough. I still think it's gonna spread it out like the cows might get to the outskirts of it a little bit, but I don't know. Sorry, I'm out of breath. It's a lot of work. <sighs> but uh, anyways, this thing should be going off in the next few minutes. I'm gonna put my apples down here. Now you go to Walmart and you buy your corn, your deer corn, it's apple flavored. Well, it's really not apple flavored. This is a true apple flavored corn. It's apple flavored with a hint of pear. <laughs> And this is, this is really going to draw in the, the animals. Probably just made a bunch of coon come in here. Oh, if I forget. getting stung by wasp <laughs> but uh it goes right about here then cows they can pick up a little bit of it but they ain't gonna get the majority of it now that is some true apple flavored corn right there mm -mm. so i'm gonna get my rock put back on top there well that's enough work for today i'm hot sweaty and uh it's almost dinner time so I'm gonna get, I need to add some tea post in here too. I really think these cows are gonna break this down. I need to add one more strand of barbed wire. It'll keep the cows out and the hogs out, hopefully. No, it won't keep the hogs out. Which, you know, I haven't seen a hog up here in probably 10 years. And when Bo was over here, him and Sean, we were looking at the place to see what kind of work we're going to do. Um, Bo said, there's hog trucks. I said, Bo, we ain't got hogs out here. So we don't have hogs. I was like, oh, it looks like a hog truck. And it wasn't. The very next night, I had pictures of ho a hog, two hogs, on my camera. Pretty close to where Bo saw them tracks. So. Right, I gotta give it to Bo. Bo was right. So, alright. I'm gonna get out of here. I think it's gonna work out good. I just need to add some T-Post. Alright guys, this is one of my favorite views in Oklahoma. And this is here on top of the hill uh, at our Locust location. And it is beautiful, but it, it, it is even more beautiful now that uh we had some work done and uh sean from keeping it dutch he come on over brought his equipment and has done a great job on this not not only sean bo from moorhead homestead he come over and helped out also and uh so this is over on the east side of the hill sorry for the wind um so this is over on the east side of the hill and this we had this cleared off probably oh six or seven years ago and there's a certain part of this hill that we couldn't ever after we had it cleared up that we couldn't get in there and mow 
and uh, Sean had his skid steer and his mowing machine, brought it in here and just did a great job cleaning this up. Just, just amazing job. And uh, I'm gonna kind of show you guys what it looks like. So all the way over here, this is a pretty good, pretty good size area. All the way here. So if you go back, um, we had a snow this past winter and a bunch of Phillips friends came over and did some sledding and it was pretty rough go going down there. So this next year, hopefully it's gonna be even better. Thanks to Bo and Sean for, uh, for cleaning this up. Um, so we've got the other side to do and I, was, I really wanted to get some before and after pictures of this side because I mean, you just, it, it, it's hard to imagine what it, I mean, it looks a lot better now. Um, but I'll, I'll show you the the other side of the hill. Uh, Bo, he's he's bringing the machine up the up the hill to the other side, and uh, we'll get some video of that going. Dad, he he was wanting to do this. He came up here with a tractor, and he, he get he got down. He's very careful about whenever he's doing stuff, and he got down as close as he could safely with the tractor, and it just didn't get it close enough. And so I told him, Sean, he's kind of wanting to go out and do some. Uh, some of this machinery work. I said, hey, why don't you come over here to the hill? And he said, man, that'd be great. And I told dad about it and dad was super excited because I don't know if you ever had like people come out and do work for you. Sometimes it is very difficult to get people to come out and he's he's asked a few people and I've asked a few people and they said, yeah, we, but he just couldn't ever get anybody to come out to do, do it. And uh, man, Sean, he jumped, he jumped right on it. So, and we're very thankful for, for good friends like that. It's not as big, but it is nasty and woolly. It's a, it's a mess. So, I think I hear him starting it up. Oh, here he comes. Walking stick. All right, Bo. What's your, uh, what's your game plan on this? Take it one path at a time, just like this. And I work my way to the bottom and around the side of the hill there. So. Yeah. Well, you're doing a heck of a job. It's looking good, man. Thank you. Yep. Yeah. So, uh. Is this low enough for you? Oh, yeah. Yeah, enough to get them snakes. Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, we're, 
we're over here at the uh, property here in Locust Grove and we've got a lot of stuff going on. I've got my oldest brother, he's over here messing around with, a, with his drone and uh, he's gonna get some footage for us, so there we go. All right, so we got some footage coming for you there. And then I've also got Dutch, keeping the Dutch. He's over there running the machine and Bo, he's over there giving the orders <laughs> on uh, where to put the stuff. So <laughs> you're getting some drone footage now. See if, see if we can sneak in there, covert. Look at Bo, I'll give you a little commentation. Bo, he's, 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 he's giving the orders. <laughs> That's pretty sweet. Go over there and buzz Bo. <laughs> Bo's giving me a look. <laughs> All right, so they're doing some cleanup out here on the land and done a lot of mowing up there on the hill. You guys have seen the footage from that. It's done really good. And now they're just kind of finishing up on these old dozer piles. It's just been an eyesore out here. As soon as we drive out here, this is what we see. So. <clears throat> Anyways, they're over there doing that. I'm gonna go over there, make contact with them and make sure they're doing everything right. <laughs> 